Yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay. So, one thing we've known forever is that there's multiple ways to represent um, a rotation. So for example, if I want to rotate um, 135 degrees, or let's say 3 pi over 4 radians, right? Is there still, is there another way? So if I tell somebody, okay, look this way, and I'll rotate 3 pi over 4, right? Is there another way to make somebody end up facing this way? Yeah, I could go this way. What would that be? Um, well, it would be, well, be 5 pi. Maybe 5 pi over 4. Yeah. One cool thing to remember is if you go backwards, these two add to be 2 pi. Because together they make a full rotation, right? So if I have the point in polar coordinates 4, 3 pi over 4, an immediate other way to write that same point it's just with a negative angle. Now, so if I'm here, so both of those points end up somebody turning and walking, and in both cases they end up at the same point. That's why they're two different representations of the same one. What's another one? Because I wanted basically three, because I gave you one, and then you had to give me two more. Right? So this is the one I would have given you. This is an automatic one you could do. What's another one where the R is negative? So if one happens to end up here, which way would they face so that when they walk backwards, they end up here? Well, it have to be here, right? There's a few different ways to identify this angle. One way to identify that is negative pi over 4. And the other way is, whee, 7 pi over 4. So again, it's all about... Uh, identifying a point in two dimensions. We can either do it with x, y, or we can do it with r, theta. If we do it with r, theta, and we've known this since the beginning, uh, I, I, if I rotate by this much, and I rotate by this much, it's the same thing. So I could just rotate forever. So how many representations exist for a given polar coordinate point? Infinite numbers. Because I can just rotate forwards and backwards as much as I want to. You guys semi with me? Yes? So another one would be negative 4. And you can say negative pi over 4 or negative 4, 7 pi over 4. Those are both the same thing. Is that okay? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, quiz, yeah. Remember, you can correct everything except the final. It's a very appropriately named final exam. All right, so today is wide open. You can ask questions from the quiz. I think a few more people just came in. Let me give you your quiz back. You can ask questions from the practice final. You can ask questions from homework. You can ask just general questions like, Hey man, what the hell was up with sine two theta? Uh, whatever comes to mind. And the entire semester is on the in play here for the final exam. So let, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this real quick. Let's kind of step through the semester.
any point, if you have a question, is your floor. If no one has questions, I'm going to ask myself questions. I was going to ask if you could do like transformation or volume. Yeah. So Okay, so real quick, who remembers what uh, this function would look like if you graphed it? Can you trace it in the air for me? You guys remember what any function like that would look like? Like, um, you remember what e is? Okay, okay. So let's just put this a, a three. Okay. Does anyone remember the general shape of a function like this? Well, you're thinking about your actual question. I'm asking about this one. Okay, let's see. Uh, if I let x get bigger and bigger, three squared, three cubed, three to the fourth power, what's happening? Isn't that growing very quickly? In fact, that's where the expression exponentially growing, it's growing exponentially, right? So it would, base, it would go here. What is three to the zero power? So it goes through zero one. And what's three to the negative one? Three to the negative two. So for example, what's three to the negative two power? What's a negative power do? Flip it. Flip it. So what's three to the negative two? One over three squared, which is? One ninth. So it's gonna go, it's gonna get really small and really quicker. There. Okay, so a huge point of this class, like I told you guys from the very beginning, this class is also could be called graphing hell, because once you get to calculus, you want the graphs to be semi-quick. You just gotta do little rough sketches so the calculus makes more sense. So you have to know that anything to the x power looks like this. Okay. What's the relationship between this function this function. Huh? Does, yeah. does the domain ever reach zero? It never reaches zero, right? I mean, the, it, the range? It never goes negative. Yeah, there's nothing you could raise three to. If I raise three to a negative power, let me just put negative p. <laughs> Isn't that going to be one over something? The only way a fraction can ever equal zero is if the top is zero. Isn't the top always one? So that's why this never gets to, and of course that means there's a what here? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So what's the relationship between this function and that function? Well, what's the relationship? Oh, well, you can answer with one word. How are they related to each other? Inverse, kick ass. They're the inverse. In fact, we graphed this thing before we even knew the symbol for this thing. Because we just took that graph and squished all the x's and y's and graphed it, right? So what will this look like then? Well, it's gonna, everything's gonna flip over that mirror. That's how inverses work. So now it's gonna look like that. Oh, you just suck. Maybe, real quick, real quick. What's the domain of this guy? What's the domain of that guy? Negative All real numbers, yeah. Negative infinity to infinity. What's the range? Zero to infinity. Zero to infinity. What's on the zero? Parentheses, right? Because you don't can't get to zero. So, what's the domain of this one? How do inverses work? They take the what and the what and they switch it. X and Y. Aren't X's domains? Y is in the range. So what is the domain of this guy? Zero to infinity. And you can see that there is an asymptote there. And what's the range? Yeah. Any inverse function We'll take the domain and range of the original and flip them around, because that's what inverses do. They switch the x and the y. So, now we can actually answer your question. What if I had a problem like this here?
what would the transformations be? do that in this order, correct? That would be the order of operations. That's the way to do it. In this case, it really doesn't matter, but just to be safe. Okay. So I have to know what the base function looks like, right? So I know the base function has an asymptote here. I know, so the base function, log base 2 of x. What's log base 2 of 1? Log base 2 of 1 is 0. And it, go, and it, it goes like this to the asymptote, correct? Okay. What's well, log base 2 of 2? 1. And then it goes like this. So now you can just shift those around. The better you know the shape of a function, the less points you need to graph it. Right? If I know the shape, I just need a few points, and then I can just put the shape on top. So if I take this point, what am I going to do with it? Then I move it left three. One, two, three. And then down one. Down one. Take this point. One, two, three, down one. Where's the asymptote go? Everything moves left three, right? What's down one do to an infinite point? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so I'm going to move the asymptote. One, two, three. It's going to be here now. So if I know what the base function looks like, what's base function mean? Take out the transformation. I can just do these things to each point and just plot the shape on top of it. That's the whole point of transformations. If I ask you to graph x squared, you should all go, oh sweet, yes, please, dear God, I can do that shit. So if I ask you to graph x minus one squared plus two, you just take the x squared and you move it how? Right one? Up two. Right, so now you're going to have a thing sitting up here. Maybe. So in, in this case, I would graph there, there, there. There's my base function, right? We all know what the parabola looks like. And then I would take every point and I would move it right one, up two. Right one, up two. Right one, up two. Now my parabola is there. Pretend like this is a good, wow, well, like that big. You guys remember that we did, we've done transformations so many times, right? The most recent thing we did with transformations was probably everybody's favorite with the trig, the phase shift, and the period, right? That's still basically just transformations. We just gave them special names for trig functions. Right, maybe. So just to remind you guys, you can ask questions from any quiz, any test, any practice test, any, any, any homework, uh, the practice final exam, general questions like Christian just did, like, hey man, what the hell's up with logarithmic transformations? Okay, cool, yes? Um, can we do zeros of polynomials? Oh, all right. Yeah, there's a problem on the practice final that will make this go a little bit quicker instead of me trying to make one up right here on the spot. Um, do you know which one I'm talking about? No. Uh, it's this number, oh shoot, I think, oh good, yeah, one more. Uh, six and seven, right? And by the way, I do have the answer key for this. I'm just not going to give it to you yet. 
anyone remember anything about uh, checking out how many zeros this might have, like how many positive zeros, how many negative zeros? How do I check that? And this is not what I ask in this question, right? I'm just going to kind of blow this question up a little bit. How many positive and negative zeros? How do I check that? Real zeros. What's the name of that dude? Okay. Yes. It's all kinds of really dumb jokes about Descartes and the horse. Descartes' rule of signs. How many sign changes are there in the original function? Yeah, just one. One sign change. So how many positive roots could there be? One positive root. So I guarantee there's one positive real root. What's f of negative x? Which, which things won't change sign? Like the nine don't give a shit what x is, because it's, it's a nine. So it's going to be minus nine. Five x squared, when I put a negative, it's, the square makes it positive, right? So this is going to change signs, and this is going to change. When I put a negative x, how many sign changes here? One, two. Two sign changes. How many negative real roots can there be? Two or zero. Why the hell do we go down by two? Because if they aren't real, they must be complex. Complex numbers come from quadratic formula that has a plus or minus, so they always have to show up in pairs. So that's why if they're not too real, that must mean they both must be complex. I like it. How about the list of possible zeros? Is this coming back? Possible rational zeros. What are you looking at? Plus or minus? Say again? Sure, P over Q. Right? If that means anything to you. Yeah, the factors of this. What's the factors of this? Divided by the factors of this, which of course doesn't do anything to me, right? So if there was a 4 there, I would have to divide that by 1, 2, 4, and then make all the fractions. You guys remember doing that stuff? What good does this do me? Well, this gives me the list of things to try. So now, it's not a terribly huge list. There are six numbers in that list, yes? And you just got to pick and, and hope, right? On the actual final, I would give you, remember this? I would give you several ways to kind of shrink your list down, right? But six isn't that bad. Somebody want to pick one to try? Say again? One. So how do I do this? How do I check it? Good old synthetic, right? One. I like it. Synthetic division kicks a lot of butt. Much better than long division. So why don't we always do synthetic division then? Why don't we just always do synthetic? You can't always no, why do don't it. we always just, we should just do it, right? It's great. You can't always do it. Why? Um, I want to say it's in... I don't think it's negative. So it's got to be when the, the thing I'm dividing by needs to be x plus something or x minus something. So in this case, what does this relate to? You guys remember? If this works, what's the factor of this? Yes. So if I wanted to divide something by x squared plus 7, to be really honest, I could use synthetic. I'd have to do it twice with a really gross complex number. So we're just going to say we can't do it. <laughs> So if I'm trying to divide by something that is not in this form, 
I cannot use synthetic division. That's, that's what it's kind of built on. Okay. So how does synthetic division work? Bring the one down. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. Why am I really, really happy to see that? What does that mean? What's that zero mean? That means that this goes into this evenly. Right? There's no remainder. Can somebody tell me, based on our results, how have we factored this so far? I already told you what goes into it. This. What's left? Can you factor this? Nine, three plus three six. How many negative roots did we end up with? All right, real quick. What's the root for this one? What's the root for this? How many of those did we end up with? Two. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? There. Two negative real roots. Did I have to get it? No, but the, it makes sense. And how many positive roots did I get? Holy shit. Awesome. Now, what was the actual question? I think did I answer? <laughs> I've done so much extra stuff to this. Uh, okay, yeah, we did it. There's factored form, right? Okay, and that kind of leads into number seven. But we'll see if there's a question on that. By the way, in number seven, it's self-referential because I took some problems out. It should say put a problem in six. Yeah. <laughs> I took some problems out of the practice final, so I just forgot to change that. What are those other roots? Say again? What about the roots? Well, what, what are the roots? <laughs> one. one or negative three. What's the multiplicity of one? One. Negative three. I don't know what <laughs> the multiplicity is. It's just how many times it showed up. How many times do I get negative three as an answer? Like three. Twice. So it's really just the power on the piece where the root came from. So when I go to graph this, what's it going to do at negative three? It's going to go through or it's going to turn? What's the parabola do? The parabola would turn. What's it going to do at one? It's going to go through because that's what a line would do. It would go through. Because remember this, odd multiplicity goes through, even multiplicity turns, because that's what the hell a line and a parabola would do, right? for example. So maybe we should do number seven. Okay, so let's keep this stuff here. what we've got here. So number seven, let's collect what we know about number six. We know that the x-intercepts are one, zero, negative three, zero, multiplicity one, multiplicity two. So it's going to go through this one and it's going to turn at that one. Some teachers say bounce. Some teachers say touch. Whatever the shit you want to call it. It's going to not go through, it's gonna come back on itself, whatever you wanna call that. Is this, do you guys remember this stuff at all, a little bit? Like, no Jeff, I blocked it. What's the y-intercept for this thing? Did you guys just see from the beginning? Negative nine, yeah, so zero, negative nine. I lock it. What else do I ask for there? Uh, indicate end behavior. Oh, so what's the end behavior for this thing? How do you tell what the end behavior is? Cubic. Yeah, cubic, which means it looks like what? Up or down. Up 
over there, down over there. Sweet, that's, that's the answer you can give me, is just a little sketch. Whatever is the highest of this. Highest power. Because when X gets really big, the highest power dominates. Why can it wibble in the middle? Because when X gets really small, these other guys get to do some stuff. Does that make some sense? That's why, and the answer's got to do in the middle to do wibbly stuff. Because X is small in the middle. What else do I say? Uh, roots we got, right? Roots is just another name for x-intercepts. Y-intercept we got. End behavior we got. Behavior at the roots we got. Uh, and then graph. Okay, let's see. So what do we know here? We know where to go. Uh, so I got an x-intercept at negative 3 and 1. Uh, I got a y intercept at negative 9. So I know it's going to come in. Let me put this down here. All right, so so far all I've done is put the x intercepts. I know those. Those are my anchors. There's no question about them. Once I know them, I can set up my x axis. I have not yet set up my y axis, correct? So what is this thing going to do? It's going to come in from this direction. What's it going to do at negative 3? turn, and then it's going to go through negative 9, so somewhere in here it's going to turn around and go through this. Do you guys see that? It's got to look like this. So it's going to come up, turn, go through negative 9 at some point, and then it's going to come up. So where is a kind of another good point to figure out to help me graph this? What's a good input to kind of see what's going on here? Can we see? So I know it's going to do this. I don't know what it's doing here. And then it's got to go through negative 9 and go up. So what's a good input? Negative 1. Negative one. Okay. What is f of negative 1? It's going to be, let's see if we can do it here. f of negative 1 is going to be negative 1 minus 1, negative 2, times negative 1 plus 3 is 2 squared is 4. It's going to be negative 8. So now I know my scale, I can make it like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. The flow is going. It's not a negative thing. Yeah. So now I can plot my y intercept. I can plot my negative 1, negative 8. So now I basically have this thing figured out. I've got this guy's number. It comes in from down here, turns. It's got to go through this, through this, and then up forever. And how do you check this? How do you check this? You put this in your calculator and you make the calculator graph this. What do you definitely, sure as all hell, not do? Please, dear God, you will lose a lot of points if you do this, and it will, it's really easy to tell when you do this. People will graph it first and then just copy that shit. And if you do that, I know you're doing it because there are things you cannot know <laughs> that are going to show up when your graph would be correct. Do you understand what I'm saying? Fight the urge. This, I guarantee you, this is wrong, but it's close enough for by hand. Does that make sense? I think this probably goes down here and you turn. It probably goes down further here. I don't know. This is the best I could do with the work that I did. When you check it, you're just trying to see is the shape look about right. That's really what you're doing. Fight the urge to copy from your calculator. I can tell. And you will lose a lot of points. Yeah, maybe. I especially love it when I get people that give me something like this. This means they didn't set their window correct, so they can't see. I don't know if you guys understand. See how this is broken? Because they didn't set their window big enough, so they can't see where it turns. And I'm like, okay. 
make it harder on me. I want a challenge when you cheat. If you cheat. Okay. Yes? Oh, yeah. Cool. Okay. And is that all right? Is there any questions on that? Did that sound familiar? Do you remember doing that? We did that at a decent amount, but it's been a little while. Everything's been a little while, right? Okay. Um, does anyone remember what the function in number eight, what those kind of functions are called? Again, names are less important than knowing how to work with something. But is that just, a, just out of curiosity? Do you guys remember what this is called? Okay, you guys are all like, I don't know, man. Fred? Um, so it's a ratio, correct? of two polynomials, so we call it a rational function. Now again, you don't have to know the name necessarily, but how do you work with this thing? Um, what's a really good first step, especially considering the questions that I ask? It's a really good first step here. All right, well, true, but how am I gonna do that? When is this thing equal to zero? If the what is a fraction equal zero? If the top is zero. zero. How do I tell really quickly where the top is zero? If I... Factor. factor it, right? If I factor it, I could just see what x's make it zero, correct? So a really good first step with rational function problems is factor the top and the bottom. So what do I get here? What do I get on the top? And on the bottom, yeah, it's got to be 4 and 1, right? And the 4 has got to be negative to make the middle term negative. So what are my x-intercepts? There's two of them, right? There's negative 2, 0, and 2, 0 see that from the top, right? The only way to make a fraction zero is if the top is zero. Some of you guys throw four and negative one in there too, but what does four and negative one do to this poor function? If I try to throw a four in there, what happens to the function? Makes it undefined. Undefined, freaks the shit out. So it can't be an x-intercept because it freaks it out. What do we know happens there though? Freaks it out means what technically? What's gonna be at four? Yeah, a vertical glass, a wall saying you can't go here. So it's going to either do this kind of thing or it's going to do this kind of thing, right? Asymptotic high five. Ooh. Or maybe. So that's real quick before we do. So asymptotes, we'll do those in a second. What's the y intercept? You can see it from the very beginning. How do I always find the y intercept? I make x zero. So what's the y intercept? One, zero. You guys see that? No, I don't care what the function is. If I ask you for the y-intercept, you make x zero. If I ask you for the x-intercept, you make y zero. It's crazy. What kind of asymptotes are there? There are two, sort of three. No? Do you remember? No, you guys don't remember that. Is this what you want from us? What kind of line is this? Vertical. Oh, vertical. Vertical, yes. Right. If your horizon is like this, you are laying down. Something has happened to you. You need to stand up. Okay. So there's vertical asymptotes, the va, and then there's the ha, horizontal asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes are the walls we put 
on certain x values that we're not allowed to use. So what are those obviously? I can't use x equal to. I can use x equal to two, it makes it zero. What makes it freak out? Four, because that makes the bottom zero, correct? I really want you to understand. It, it makes, so four makes this thing divide by zero. Bad. I can't use four. So it almost makes too much sense. Visually, what I do then, I put a wall at four. You cannot use this, right? So my function starts to come at four. It's got to, oh shit, it's got to pull up or go down. It, it can't use four, so it can't go through it. There's no way, there's no output for it. So it can't use four, what else? Negative one. Oh, shnike. Horizontal asymptote, there are three situations. Does anyone remember anything about the three situations for horizontal asymptote? Has it to do with the top and bottom relationships or not? Say again? If the exponent's larger on the top than the bottom, the top grows faster, it goes to infinity, that would be the third kind of asymptote slant. Is that true for us? No. If the degree on the bottom is bigger, the bottom grows faster. I'm dividing by bigger, 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 so the asymptote would be zero. Is that what's going on with us? Nope. When they're equal, the degrees, what's the asymptote? These are equal, aren't they? The highest powers are equal. So how do I find the asymptote? Yeah, yeah, the coefficients, right? One to one, so they, it's one. If this was a four, it would have been one fourth. Okay, so there's three things that could happen for the ha, and the va, the Virginia, is easy. It's just all the x's that make it freak out. I'm gonna put a wall there. Can't go here. Okay, what else do I ask for? I think I. Tried to help out a little bit. Um, yeah, f of three and f of five. So what's f of three? Let's see what we get. Nine minus four is five. Nine minus nine is zero, minus four is negative four. So I get negative 1.25, is that cool? I'm just trying to be helpful, give you a few more points. What's f of five? 25 minus 4 is 21. 25 minus 15 is 10, minus 4 is 6. Divide by 3, I get 7 halves, so I get 3.5. Okay. And that's just what I asked you there, right? I didn't just pull those out of nowhere. I told you to try to get those. All right, so take a minute. I've been doing enough work. You guys try to graph this with all the information we have. Take a minute, try to graph it. Graph it. Now, just to let you know, on the day of the final, I will have little graphs for you to use, and I will have polar graphs, right? You don't have to bring your own. They'll be included.
one really yeah. important step that people sort of skip is your why scale. It depends on all the outputs of everything. So that's why I can make my scale one because my outputs for my whys are relatively small. If I got f of five was 600, my scale would obviously have to be very different, right? Intercepts, put my walls, I could put my two points that I figured out, f of 3 is negative 1.25, f of 5 is 3.5, that's definitely the one I needed, but it's good to help on. Do you guys see the three regions that this has been broken up into? Right, the walls, the vertical walls always break them up into regions. So back here, it could have been this or this. It's obviously which one? The lower one, right, because I have an intercept there. If there were no intercepts back here, it would have been up here. Kind of cool. So it's got to go like that, because it's got to approach this, it's got to go through here, and it's got to approach that. Bam. That's all it could be. The middle now, it's got relatively little uh, trouble. Is anybody worried about something that's happening? You see how it's got to slam up against here, it's got to go there, it's got to go there, and then it's got to slam up against there. Bam. It, it's pretty much defined for me all the way through. Are you guys, you guys see how it goes right through this, doesn't it? These walls are the X's I cannot use. This wall is what the function does when X gets really big. Is X really big here? Hell no, they can go through this thing. In fact, I don't know if you guys remember, I could have like a cosine or something that has an asymptote and it does like this. Is it getting closer to the asymptote? Yes. Is it also crossing through it infinite times? Yes. That's like me plucking a guitar string. Thankfully, the, it goes down and down, so they're not playing forever. Every guitar string, boom, is still playing. Holy shit. No, thankfully, it dampens over time. Maybe. So you can cross a horizontal asymptote all day long, but you cannot cross these guys. So back here, what's, it could have been here or there, and now there's no question, it's definitely up here. Okay. And again, you can throw that in the old calculator, kind of check to make sure things look roughly right. Just don't erase and copy, that's bad, bad idea. So when it comes to negative four, in the beginning like it goes down, how come it, in the beginning here, when it goes down, how come it, Start from the top instead of the bottom. So let me ask you: If it started from the bottom and went up like this, uh -huh. so if it did this, it would have to go yeah. like that. How? So if it, all right. So I really want you to understand. So that seems okay so far, right? Uh -huh. Isn't it supposed to approach this wall? How is it going to do that if there's no other intercept? It can only get through there if there's an intercept, and there isn't. I like it. Oh, okay. That's a really good question, though. I mean, because I can approach this thing like this. What the hell? That's fine. Oh, shit. I can't get back. So if there was another intercept, maybe that's what it would have done. That would have been really freaky. But that's a good question. You get, do you see that? Kind of like you're breaking the wall. Yeah, I can't. If, if I go through and I end up over here, aren't I supposed to be up there eventually? I can't get back there because there's no x-intercept. If I do this, you're saying there's an x-intercept there. And there, there isn't. See, I like it. So yes, these things, 
it is strictly this or this because of what we just talked about, which is great. And the minute you know where there's a point, you know which, which side it's on. Just like over here, there's no intercept, so it must be up here. I didn't even really need this point, but you know, I told you to get that point just to help a little bit. Think there were a couple of problems. Let me do this. Uh, yeah, one D and E. There were a couple of problems I did not put on the answer key uh, because I was tired. So <laughs> I think it's one major reason. Um, not one. What was it? Four. Four D and E. Oh yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Let's do this on the paper. I think that'd be easier. Four D and E are related to that graph. Hello. There we go. Poor little dude. Okay, so can somebody help me? Look at that part D. This is the thing where you guys, uh, when I ask you this question on that test when we first did transformations, a lot of you guys just gave me a line for this. What is, what is F? What is, what is F? Yeah, where's that function? What's it look like? Where is it? In this problem, what is F of X? Do I tell you what it is algebraically? No. What do I give you? Yeah, so there's F of X right there. Is it a straight line? Nope, got a bit of a kink in it, yes? So I'm asking you to take the function f and do what to it? What do those two things say to do? No, no, no. This would tell you to go which direction for this one? Left two. And then down one. I'm just going to take every point. Left two, down one. Left two, down one. Left two, down one. And then I'm just going to redraw the shape. Same shape, just been moved. That's all. Okay, how the hell am I going to do this one? Let's see if I can do that in a different color. What does this mean? Yeah, 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 exactly. So the original function, what point does it go through? What point is this? Zero, three. What point is this? Two, negative one. Five, negative three, yes. So what's my inverse going to go through? Three, zero, right? Switch the X and Y. Negative one, two. And I get a three, five. So three, zero, bam. Negative one, negative two. I'm sorry, negative one, two, bam. And then here's the one that's evil, Jeff. Evil past Jeff. Oh, shit, I can't even really put it because I put that there. Negative three, one, two, three. It's off axis, sorry. Five. So it's going to be right there. So and then you just fill in. The shape. Oh shit. I could just draw the skirt. That'd be awesome. Now that is really weird looking, but if I put, remember this y equals x line? Do you see how that green line is the reflection of the black line? It's really weird when it kind of is sort of perpendicular to the mirror. It's kind of strange. But that's it. So maybe. So that's all you got to do. It's crazy. How do you algebraically find the inverse? I switch the x and y, and then I solve for y. So the, what's the main idea behind inverses? Switch the x and y. It's awesome. So 
So D and E I did not have on the key. What else do I not have on the key? Oh, uh, seven we did. I didn't do the graph of number seven on the key, so it's up here. Um, and 15 I didn't do just because I didn't feel like it. <laughs> I got to the one I was out of cards. Um, so we could do 15. Yeah, 15, of course I didn't do it. Right, this beautiful stuff here. Okay. So let's do 15, unless you guys have a different question that's more pressing. I definitely want to do 15. Yes? How do you do angle of elevation real quick? Oh, uh, angle of elevation, angle of depression. What are they related to? Looking straight out. So if I'm on the ground and I look to the top of a tree, there would be an angle of elevation. It would be this angle. If I'm on a plane and I'm looking down on an angle of depression, it's always related to me looking straight out. And then it's the angle that I do this, right? That's the depression angle. So if I'm looking down, this would be an angle of elevation. Looking up. So it's really important if you put it in the wrong place in your picture, everything's going to be a mistake. The nice thing is, you have a teacher that doesn't do Scantron <laughs> tests. So if you make that one mistake, you put your angle in the wrong place, but you do everything else right, you're only going to lose a few points for that angle being in the wrong place. Everything, you're going to get most of the points. Okay. I always say if you have a math teacher that needs a Scantron for a test, they are not a math teacher. I don't know what they are, but they do not teach math. What do they mean by staying out the top? Which part? Uh, 10. 10. Oh! Like yeah, what's taut? Sorry, it's a weird word, but you guys know what taut means? If you have a rope and you're pulling something, what's it mean when the rope is taut? Tight is a way to say tight, right? So. Because it would be a really difficult problem if this was wavy, because then it wouldn't be a triangle, right? I need a straight line. So a taut means the triangle I make actually has a nice straight line. Right? That means the length of the rope. Say again? That means the length of the rope is. Well, let's do this problem. Let's see. Um, where do you go? Here it is. Is it the 328 on the x axis? So the angle of elevation. So here I am on the ground. So the angle of elevation would be the angle like this. So this is 54 degrees, right? And here's my kite. So angle of elevation, here I am. It's the angle that I have to turn my head through so I can see the kite or my eyes, right? Whatever moves so I can see it, it's that angle it goes through. So if something's directly overhead, the angle of elevation would be 90 degrees. And, oh shit, right? Where's 348 go on my triangle? The what part of the triangle? Hypotenuse. Hypotenuse, that's where the string would be, right? It's where the rope, the string would be to the kite. So that's 348. And I want to know how high up in the air it is. So what trig function relates this angle with these sides? Sine. Sine of 54 degrees equals y over 348. Right? Multiply the 348. Put it in the old calculator. Of course, be really careful. What do you have to be really careful about when you're doing trig of angles? Make sure that you're in radians or degrees, whichever thing it needs to be, correct? It sucks so bad when it's not. I can attest to that personally. Okay, um, what was the other? Oh yeah, so I want to do number 15, but I want to make sure you guys have a chance to, if there's something else you want to look at. What was number 15? Which, which one? Number 14. 14? Yeah, 14 looks gross. Yeah, okay, let me put it up on the board. I don't have much room here. Bum, bum, bum. Turn my camera. No, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, let's see. 
So 14 So in the final, you have to memorize the things that was really nice to you yesterday about, right? What is uh, r squared equal to? Square root of square root. What is x equal to? Yes, x does not equal cosine. x equals r times cosine. What's y? Right, and then of course you got this thing. I need to convert this back into x's and y's. Do you see a trig function that would be really cool if it had an r with it? Do you see a sign kind of hanging out somewhere? Do you see that? If only there was an r right there, what, what could we put here? A y. You see that? Because r sine theta is y. If only there was another r on this guy, it'd be r squared, and then it could put x squared plus y squared. If only there was another r here, because there's two cosines, this would become x squared. I can, so how do I make an r? One more. I just multiply by r. So I get r squared, which takes that, or r sine theta, which takes that plus 3 r squared cosine squared, which takes that, equals 0, which takes that. What is r squared? x squared plus y squared. What's r sine theta? Y. And what is r cosine theta squared? x squared. Can we stop for a minute? Do you guys get the idea? It's an equation. If I'm just catch myself going, man, I wish there was an R. Well, then you just multiply by it. It's an equation. You can multiply both sides. But it takes so much out of it. So maybe. All right, now you can actually start the problem. Can anyone tell me right now what shape this is in, if I was to graph this? Uh, let's... R cosine theta. X. So what's R cosine theta squared? Right. Isn't this just R cosine theta squared? Because it's R squared cosine squared? Yeah. So I put X squared there. I like that. Can anybody tell me? Is, is this going to be a circle, an ellipse, a hyperbola? Not quite. It's definitely not a hyperbola, so I agree with you. It's a circle or an ellipse. So it's obviously an ellipse. Why do we know that? Does the x squared have the same coefficient as the y squared? No. In fact, what's the x squared have? 4x squared. So what makes a circle not a circle? What, what, how could, what would I do to a circle to make it not a circle? Make it act differently in the x and y direction. Say again. X squared plus 3x squared. Oh, 4x squared and plus the other shape. Do you guys remember? So if that was what it was, that would be a circle all day long because it acts the same in the x and the y direction. Here, oops, it doesn't act the same. It can't be a circle because the circle's got to be symmetric all the way around. Is this in the right form, though? What's wrong with the form of it? What do I have to kind of collect together? What's not all together yet? Do, all, do I have all my x terms sort of together? Yes. Do I have all my y terms together in a single thing? No. So what do I have to do with this? Complete the square. Half of 4 is 2 squared is 4. 
Yes? So we get 4x squared plus y plus 2 squared equals 4. And now what is wrong still? What's supposed to be something else? Yeah, this is supposed to be 1 here, correct? So I just divide by... So we get x squared plus y plus 2 squared over 4 equals 1. So we know it's an ellipse for sure. It's not a hyperbola because there's not a minus. It's not a circle because there's different coefficients on the x piece and the y piece. What's the center? Zero. This hasn't been shifted at all, right? Negative two. It's been shifted back too, correct? It's in there with the y. Yeah. How far from the center will I go in the x direction? What's underneath here? Yeah, so how far in the x direction will I go from the center? One. How far in the y direction will I go from the center? Two, good. It's the square of the answer down here, right? So a squared, b squared. So that's how I'm going to go two. I mean, this is almost too nice to believe. It's, so if you put it in that form, it just tells you, here's how to graph, right? Yes? What is the x-ray intervention? Oh, what did I do to this side? I added four, correct? So I better add four to the other side. Now, I could have done this. In which case, I would have had to add four to both sides, yes? Okay. So when I actually have two sides to work with, I don't have to do the whole Indiana Jones thing. I can just, whatever I do to one side, directly do it to the other side. Okay. The thing we had earlier was, I didn't really have two sides. I had f of x equals, I didn't have two sides, so I had to kind of like add and subtract all on the same side. I don't have to do that here, yeah, because I have actually two sides. Um, so, find the center. 0, negative 2. I put a little C there for the center. From the center, I'm going to go 1 out on the x direction. Then I'm going to go 2 up and 2 down y direction. There's my, show me what you got, my, my ellipse. So what's one change I would have made if this I wanted a hyperbola? I would have made this a minus, right? It would have been a minus uh, somewhere up here. Like, uh, well, it would have been a little weird from the beginning. I would have made a minus somewhere, yeah. So if your x piece and your y piece ends up subtracting hyperbola, if they're adding circle or ellipse. Again, we talked about that. Remember, if I add two positive numbers, they can't both get as big as they want to be, so it's contained. If I subtract two positive numbers, they can each get stupid big and still subtract to be something, so that's why it's uncontained. So ellipse versus hyperbola. Okay. Uh, Let's do 15, and then I'll give you the answer key. All right, this is exciting. So we'll see if past Jeff made a problem that works. That would be nice. Is that what I did? 
Yeah, it's supposed to be a Z there. Good job, buddy. See that? X minus Y plus 2Z. I wasn't trying to be tricky. So how do I do this without a matrix? How do I do this? So I got my one, two, three equations. How do I how do I do this? What's the main problem? Why do I not like any of these equations? They all have three unknowns. So if I don't like them because they all have too many unknowns, what do I start trying to do? Kill them. Kill them. Yeah. So which letter do you want to kill twice? There's one that I think would be best, but we'll see if you guys agree. Why? Yeah. Why, why? Because what do I add right now, the way it is, and it will kill Y? One, two. One plus two. Everybody knows one plus two is four. <laughs> Why did I do that? Because if I add one and two, don't I make a new equation? Don't I already have three? Then won't that make the fourth equation? Okay, so those, that's not math. That's just the first and second equation create a fourth equation. You guys with me? <laughs> I love it. And I just don't know numbers. I don't know. So what do I get when I add one and two? X minus two X is negative X. Negative Y plus Y is zero. Two Z minus three Z. Three plus four. No. Oh, sorry, three minus four. Oh my God, it's a glare right there. Three minus four, negative one. That equation is better. There's only two on this, right? Okay, so that's still, how to, okay, Jeff, yay, good, good, good job, math boy. What, what can I do with this now? I can't do much. I have to make another equation. I have to kill the same letter twice. So how can I kill Y again? I can't add one and two because I already did that. So I have to use one and three or two and three. It's up to you. Two and three, because they're already opposite signs. I agree with you. So what would I do to two to make it be able to cancel with Yeah, multiply by three, right? So I get negative six x plus three y minus nine z equals negative twelve. So multiply by three, is that cool? Let's so see we get negative two x. The y's cancel. Minus 8z equals negative 20. You see how I can divide by negative 2? Right? Let's just go ahead and do that. I get x plus 4z equals 10. Is that cool? And that is my fifth equation. All right. Way to go, math boy. You made another equation, yay. But this is beautiful. Why is this so awesome? This is awesome. What letter can I kill immediately now? X. So if I take the fifth equation, if I add these together, those cancel. I get three Z equals nine. Good job, pass Jeff. It actually works, okay, good. Now it's dominoes. The minute I get one variable, I can get the other two. If I know Z, how can I get X? Plug it in, and it's at either one. So I'm just gonna plug it in the fifth one just because X plus four times three equals 10. So X is negative two. All right, so am I done? Done a lot of work, am I done? No, shit, because I still don't know why. why. I still don't know why. Okay, so let me just use the first guy here. 
Uh, X is negative 2. Z is 3. All right, so if I take that equation, this is 4. Subtract 4, divide by negative 1. There we go. What's another way to write the answer? Yeah, yeah. So it's the three dimensional point negative two, one, three. Okay, let me stop for a minute. If you have to do this without a matrix, pick a letter, kill it twice. Why? Because now I have a much nicer system of equations, so I can just attack it directly. Let's see what this looks like as a matrix problem. So take uh, just a couple seconds here and write the augmented matrix for that. Is all good? No. <laughs> all it takes is one thing. All it takes is one sign not trans not coming with you. Whole thing goes to shit. This is what's I need you to understand. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna make sure again. I'm gonna like double check one, negative one, two, three. Negative two, one. Negative three, negative four. Four, negative three, one, negative one. Okay. Do not do it until you like double, triple check it because you miss one negative sign, the whole thing goes to shit because they all interact with each other as I do this, yes? So again, just to remind you guys, if that does happen to you or if you add two and three and get six somewhere and your matrix kind of goes nowhere, don't erase all your work. I'm grading it based on do you know what to do? If you make a little mistake, like two plus three is six, we're all human. We're gonna do that somewhere. I know you don't believe that. I can forgive that. But if I have nothing to go on to show me you know what to do, you have to lose all the points. So maybe. So even if it doesn't work, keep your work there. Show me you know what to do, and I can find the little simple mistake and see how bad it was. All right. So let, let's just do this the classic way. The classic way is you start with the first column. What is really cool about the first column? Because what's our goal? What's our goal? One, zero, zero. Yeah, one, zero, zero. Zero, one, zero. Zero, zero. And then numbers here, right? Because then I can just read off the answer. So what's really cool about that first column? There's already a one there. In fact, can I use that one to kill these guys? What would I multiply row one by? So when I add it to this, it kills this. Two, right? Ones are awesome because they can become exactly what I need them to be. I don't need them though, but it's nice when they show up. What is the main thing I'm trying to do? I'm trying to make zeros. Okay, so I'm gonna take any row one plus row two and put the answer in row two. That's where I want the zero. I don't want to lose my one. The answer in row two. So let's see what we get. So let's see, twice row one would be two, negative two, four, six. 
So I get zero, negative one, one, two. How's that so far? Now the worst thing about matrices is all the writing. So if you can if you can start to develop some shortcuts so you don't rewrite the matrix multiple times, it makes it much quicker. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. What can I multiply? How are you doing there? Oh, cool. What can I multiply the first row by to kill this? Two plus four doesn't make zero. What can I multiply the first row by to kill this? Negative four. I see what you're saying though, whoever said two, I could double the second row, but let's just use the first row here. So if I multiply the first row by negative four, do you guys see that? That would kill this, yes? So negative four row one plus row three, put the answer of course in row three, that's where I want the zero to show up. So negative four times row one would be negative four, four, negative eight, Negative 12. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. 4 minus 3 is 1. Negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7. Negative 12 minus 8 is negative 20. Okay. Is that first column done? Yes, it looks exactly like I want the first column to look like. Kick in the asset. All right, so how, in the second column, what can I do? Say again? Row one plus row three. I like it. So let's see, let's take a look at this. Row one plus row three, put the answer where? Row one, I love it, because that's where I want the zero, right? And I don't want a one here. So let's see what we get. Um, row one plus row three. One plus zero is zero. Negative one plus one is zero. Let's say one plus zero is zero. One plus two is one. Negative one plus one is zero. Two minus seven is negative five. Three plus negative 20 is negative 17. Now, real quick, do you see how if I also just add these together, this would cancel? So if I take row two plus row three, put the answer in row three, let's see what happens. Zero plus zero is zero. Negative one plus one is zero. One minus seven is negative six. Two minus 20 is negative 18. Why is that matrix so much better than at the beginning? There's a bunch of zeros. And what do those zeros mean? Those mean variables we've killed, right? So we have less unknown. In fact, what's that last row? What can I do with that last row? I can divide it by what? Negative six. Negative six. Let's see, I got one, zero, negative five, negative 17, zero, negative one, one, two, zero, zero, one, three. So what do we know already? The value of what? Z, Z is three, right? We know that already. So now this last column, it's the only column that doesn't look the way it's supposed to, correct? So I want, it, I, want it, I want a zero here, don't I? Let me see if you guys are cool with this. Do you see how I can just multiply this row by negative one? Change all the signs. Do you see why that's good? Two reasons. I want a one here. And now when I add them together, I can get a zero here, right? So if I do row two plus row three, put the answer in row two, I will get zero. 
one, zero, one. So what's the only thing that isn't the way it's supposed to be? Stupid negative five. So how do I kill it? What can I do with this so I can kill that? Yeah, so if I take five row three and add it to row one, five times zero, five times zero, five times one, five times three. So now if I add row three, five row three to row one, zero plus one is one, zero plus zero is zero, five plus negative five is zero, 15 minus 17 is negative two. Is that the, hey, look, why am I really, really happy? Because what's the answer? Or what are the answers? What's X? Two. Right, doesn't this row say X plus zero Y plus zero Z is negative two, X equals negative two, Y equals one, Z equals three. Isn't that what they're supposed to be? Oh, that's so nice. Oh, thank God. Okay, crazy sauce. Let me go ahead and give you guys the answer key. So we just did 15. So we just got on here. Yeah, number 13, I kind of got, you can look at number 13, I didn't finish it. Finish it. Lowercase side lengths, uppercase angles. So your first thing is, can I use law sines or cosines? But to be really honest, your very first thing is graph this thing, right? So I'm going to do this. Angle C is a little bit bigger than a right angle. So if I make this 98 degrees, see how that's a little bit bigger than a right angle? Just to kind of make this a little bit true to life. Um, a is 23 degrees, so we should and a half. C, B is five feet, little b. Oh, Jeff, good job, buddy. Here's A, here's C, there we go. Now you got it. So the way it is right now, if I don't do anything else, can I use law of sign? Why not? Because you don't have a complete ratio. I don't have a complete ratio. Can I use law of cosines to actually? No, I can't. Because I don't have two sides. I need to have two sides for law of cosines. But what's nice? Do I really not know anything else? Don't I know something else? I can get it really easy, I should say. Mm -hmm. what, how do I get angle B? Yeah, it's 180 minus 23. And 98. So it's whatever is left over, right? You guys see that? So if you have two angles, you automatically have three. So what is angle B? I did part of this on here, right? 
But I mean, what is Enkel? I got 59, is that right? Hopefully. Okay, thank you. You never know with the past, Jeff. 59, if that's 59 degrees. Yay! Now can I use law of sides? Hell yeah, because they have an angle and the corresponding side. So what can I set up for sine? Law of sine. Sine of? 59. 59. Divided by? 5. 5. Equals? Say again? Does it matter which one? Doesn't matter, no. Oh, Pick one. 20, 23. 23 over? A. A. What matters is you match the things. That's what matters. The thing you do first doesn't matter. They're both the same. Okay. So I think that's as far as I got. I can't remember which one I picked. I did see, of course, but okay. So now you just throw all the shit in. The really nice thing is I know all three angles. So is there a possibility for a second triangle? No, I know all three angles. I know them exactly. They can't be anything else. So I only have one triangle to kick ass, right? In fact, I just gave away it's this situation. If I have two sides and an angle, that's when I can, and that there might be no triangles, one triangle, or two triangles, right? That's it's not the situation we're in. We have ah. <laughs> We have A A A S. I don't know. Again, you don't have to memorize the S S A and the S A S and all that kind of shit. This is not geometry. We're not going to do proofs. I don't know if you guys remember those. I like them, but we're not going to do them. Uh, and then you just got to solve for A. What's the, what's one of the best ways to just solve for A? Yeah, cross multiply. So I get A sine fifty nine, five sine twenty three. So if I divide by sine of fifty nine. I just got to throw all that stuff in my calculator, right? I could be wrong, I'm trying to do it in my head. So that's a very scary, so it should be less than that, I think, two point something. I could be really wrong, let me see. Any, anybody doing that? 2.28. Yeah. Cool. What? 2.28 degrees? Yeah. Feet. Is that what you guys got? That makes sense to me. I knew it was going to be somewhere two or three, somewhere in there. Okay, that's as far as I got in my head. And yes, I'm doing freaking trick weird shit in my head. So, right. um, so what's the other thing I can set up? It's the one that I set up, the one that involves C. C is the only thing we don't know, little c. We don't know little c. And we know little a, 2.28. To figure out little c, I just do the same thing. I just use the stuff about C, which is, uh, what was it, 98 degrees over C. So I'm going to get uh, 5 sine 98 over sine 59. And exactly the same way we did over here, right? just kind of jumping ahead a little bit. Do that one that you had, Matt Boy. Um, yeah, sure. So. Divide by 17, five, like four point, probably like, probably like right around four. Uh, and again, I'm okay if I'm really far off. In fact, I have to be far off. What have I done wrong? Shoot. Um, that's one, that's five, that's right there is ten. Oh, why did I do that? Well, yeah. Which is, uh, anyway, somebody help save me from myself, <laughs> please. 5.78. 5 okay. It's a little hard to approximate trig sine of 98 degrees, but I, I 
Christ. Why does all of this make sense? What should the largest side be? From the very beginning, we knew it had to be which side? Which angle is the biggest? Yeah, so see, this one's got to be the biggest side. And it is. Yay! So on the quiz, some of you guys use law of sines, and you should have used cosines, because sines gives you a reference angle. Right? So... So you guys got like 77 degrees for that one angle, and it should have been 180 minus that. So it's because what the output of inverse sine is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So if the answer is supposed to be bigger than pi over 2, inverse sine can't tell you that, the poor little dude. We had to chop the damn thing to make the inverse exist. So it can only give us what we let it give us, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So let me, let me give you a piece of advice. When you have a problem where I give you three side lengths. So on the quiz, it was, uh, was it 10, 13, 18? Yeah. Well, that was 18, 10, 13. Start with the biggest side first. So do 18 squared equals 10 squared plus 13 squared minus 2 times 10 times 13 times cosine of whatever you want to call this. We can call this. Always start with the biggest side first because cosine, does anyone remember the outputs for inverse cosine? What are they between? Yes, zero and pi. And, and what angles could exist in a triangle? Anywhere from what degrees to what degrees? Zero to 180, zero to pi. So inverse cosine will give you the exact angle that it is. Which still matches with my cosine is an asshole. Because if cosine is an asshole, inverse cosine is nice. Kind of like the evil version of you somewhere, right? Or the nice version. Somewhere there's a nice version of you. You didn't get him, sorry. Okay. Can we go through it? Because I don't see where I messed up. All right, well, well, you do this. I'm trying to be a 13. So one really simple place for people to mess up. Let me, let me write this a little bit better. So 18 squared equals 10 squared plus 13 squared minus twice 10 times 13 times cosine c. So the biggest, easiest place, 18 squared, what is that? 400 minus 169. What is it? 18 squared. What is it? 400 minus 324. I don't have that memory. 100 plus 169 is 269. Is that cool? So I saw a lot of people do this. Uh, 20 times 13 is 260. But then I saw people do this. This is wrong. 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 What happened? Why is that wrong? What's the most fundamental thing in mathematics? The most fundamental thing in mathematics. Please excuse my dumbass son. Or dear Aunt Sally. My legitimate wife, right? Can you subtract before you multiply? And I like what you said too, Christian. Are these like terms? I have 260 cosine c's and subtracting from two. I can't put those together. There's, they're not a certain number of cosine c's. So how do you actually do this then? Well, you subtract 269. What is that? Uh, this is 55, I think, right? Are you guys with me? And then you divide by negative 260, and then you take the inverse cosine of that. You guys see that? So several people kind of did something related to that mistake. 
figured out C. C. What'd you get for C? I got 44 going 90 degrees. Yeah. And then I did the law of sine for B. Ah, the law of sine is where you messed up. Yeah. yeah. How did I? C shouldn't be 40. Wait, wait, wait. C is not. Oh, you called C something else. I don't know which. What did you call the angle across from 18? Uh, 77.7. No, no, no. What did you call it? A, B, C. Uh, angle C. Good. So, um, yeah, you got that one right. What's the very first thing? You didn't do this first, did you? No, I didn't. Ah, uh, there you go. Yeah. So, law of sines, again, inverse sine can lead to uh, reference angle. And you won't know immediately, but does it, which angle should be the biggest? The one that's across from what? 18. 18. That should be the biggest angle, right? So again, how do you keep yourself from making that mistake? When you do law of cosines, choose the biggest side first to work with. Because what do you get here? Can anybody do this for me? What's the inverse cosine of 55 over negative 2? Whoa, no. Oh, wait. Sorry. 102.21. 102.21. 21. So, like, 102. That sounds familiar. See how inverse cosine gives you the exact angle? Doesn't that make sense? Shouldn't this angle be way bigger than these? Because it's got a way bigger side, right? I made a mistake of doing an A. You made a mistake of using law of sines too early. You should use law of cosines in there. Uh, it, or at the end, when you get your answer and you get this angle is smaller than one of these, red flags. So, so if you do inverse sine of something and you got like 77.8 or something, or whatever, yeah. it, that could be a reference angle. Yes, we don't know. In which case, the answer would actually be, guess what? The actual answer would be 180 minus that, right? Yeah. And guess what that is? 102.2. Yes? When you subtract 180 minus that, don't you get 102.2? Yeah. Which is what it really is. So again, inverse sine, sine is nice, so inverse sine is mean. Inverse sine doesn't give you the exact answer. It gives you possibly a reference angle. Because it goes from negative 90 degrees to 90 degrees. Couldn't an angle in a triangle be more than 90? Uh, yeah, you, you would either do law cosines again, or if you do the largest side first, then law of sines is safe. Because the largest side is the one that could be more than 90. If that's more than 90, the other two are definitely less than 90. Law of sines will give you those. Okay. That's a really sticky little detail, but you've got to be careful. And at the end of your problem, just look real quick. Is the biggest angle across from the biggest side? If not, you have made a mistake because it opens its mouth wider. It should be able to fit a bigger stick in it. Okay, so you should be able to identify at the end of the problem. Oh, that's not right. I made a mistake. Yes. Five e. Did I not do that one? Oh, there's five e. Okay, I did. Um, this guy. Come back. Come back. Come back. <laughs> No. Okay. Um, okay. So this problem desperately sucks if you don't recognize the identity that's staring you in the face. So you all have the answer key, but if you don't look at it, can you identify the identity? Yes, I just said identify the identity that is staring you in the face. If only there was a plus, right? But that would lead to an, you know, no solution, but still, a 
at least it would be really easy. That's a minus, but that still is something. What is cosine squared minus sine squared? Cosine two x. What angle makes cosine one half? That's the question, right? That's what this says. Cosine of something is one half. What angle makes cosine one half? Say again. Pi over three. Yes. Or all right. So pi over three. What would I do? Plus or minus? Two pi k. But to be really honest, what's the other answer it could be? Yeah, it could be down here, right? They would both have the same cosine. So that would be wee, 5 pi over 3. And they're not equally spaced. So what do I put here then? 2 pi k. 2 pi k. Am I done? No. Because I haven't figured out what x is yet, right? So to figure out what x is, I just divide by 2. Divide by 2. So I get x is 5 or 6. I get what I get on my answer sheet, right? Okay. Yeah, I already wrote it down. Is that all right? I think at the end I just crossed through the 2s. Maybe that's why it looks weird. So this would be 5 or 6 plus or minus 5k. So if the 2s cancel here, right? I just didn't write it again. 5, 5, or 6 plus or minus 5k because the 2s cancel. Is that cool? No? Is that all right? Okay. So that's the beautiful thing. If, if the inside is more than just x, you at first don't give a shit about that. It's just an angle. What angles make cosine one half? Pi over three, pi pi over three. Then you just solve for x. That's, that's almost too nice to believe. So it's not a problem if the inside's 3x or 7x. Who, who cares? I, I just have to worry about it at the end. Oh, did I not finish that one? Oh, that's my time. Oh, 11. Oh, yeah, I sort of did it really quick. Um, okay. So remember, what do inverse cosines set up? Um, so if I have the inverse cosine Inverse cosine, is that what it is? Or is it inverse tangent? Inverse tangent. What an inverse trig function set up? I'm going to put this over 1, so it's a nice ratio because that relates to trig function. What do I take the tangent of? What kind of thing do we take the tangent of? What kind of thing? Do we take the tangent of a perimeter? Do we take the tangent of a volume? Do we take the tangent of a line? Do we take the tangent of a, or an? Come on, guys. Do we take the tangent of what kind of thing? Say again. What's an example problem I could ask you? Without a calculator, figure out what the tangent of what is. Give me an example problem I could ask you. Tangent of, what problem can I give you? Without a calculator, tell me what the tangent of what is. Give me an example. What can I ask you? Angle, right? I could ask you what's the tangent of 30 degrees. I could ask you what's the tangent of 5 pi over 6. Correct? So I take trig functions of angles. Right? Ground shaking right now. So maybe some of you guys are like, I don't know what this guy wants. So what is the output of an inverse trig function? An angle. Because that's how inverse work functions work, right? So this, by itself, I know there's shit in front of it. What is it, cosine? This is an angle. It's an angle that lives in a triangle where the sides are well known. 
Where, which side is y plus 1, considering which trig function it's coming from? The y side. Which side is 1? What? Oh, yeah, thanks. Thank For a minute, I didn't know. Um, did I? Yeah. Do you see why I put this over 1? Because trig functions are related to ratios, correct? And it's asking me, what's the cosine of the angle that this is related to? What am I missing to be able to answer the question, what's the cosine? Hypotenuse. So then you just do a squared plus b squared, right? And now the cosine would be 1 over this. Now, technically, you could rationalize that, but, you know, if you just get there, that's fine. Is that all right? Or whoever asked me, I'm sorry, I'm looking at you, but it's you. Okay. Okay. So remember those inverse trig functions, they immediately rep uh, represent, uh, they can be represented with a triangle that has the correct side ratios. So if I saw uh, cosecant of uh, inverse cotangent, of x over 3. What triangle can I draw from this? It's not like that's a triangle. Are we good? All right, Jeff. Go ahead. Where's x go? On the x-axis, right? Because cotangent is x over y. For cosecant, I have to know the hypotenuse is. Right, and then I can figure out what cosecant is. What would cosecant be? Cosecant's related to what? Sine. Sine is y over hypotenuse, so cosecant is hypotenuse over y. The cosecant would be this. Kabam! So inverse trig functions, I can set up a representative triangle, and then I can answer any question about them, because I've got a triangle. If I have a triangle, trig is easy. Or right triangle specifically, right? Okay. But we also know with law of sines and cosines, you know, it's relatively easy with any triangle. Um, oh, oh, okay. So remind me, uh, what is tangent theta in rectangular coordinates? Cartesian coordinates, or even just what's the definition of tangent theta? Y over x. So what is tangent squared theta? Y squared over x squared. Right? And what is R sine theta? R sine theta. What? Bam. That's a one step problem. Basically at the end of our time, but if anybody has a, another question or so, or you can come to the Math Study Center. Uh, oh, by the way, um, when is our final? Just want to make sure you guys get this. Let me pull up. Um, On the syllabus, it's on the homework sheet. Here. So it's on Tuesday. Do you see what time it starts? What time does it start? 715. Oh shit, man. Sorry, sorry, it's just the way it is. And uh, this is not evil. This is just a reality. If you come later, you have chosen to have less time. Does everybody understand? So if you get here at 8, you've chosen to have an hour and 15 minutes. I'm not going to let you. At 9.15, it is done. You guys understand? With that said, if there's an emergency, if your car breaks down, if anything happens, just email me. 
and we'll work something out. You guys with me? So don't take that to mean, oh, I'm going to be late. Screw me. I guess I'm failing. No, just email me. It's okay. But if none of that happens, get here on time. Yes? Okay. And I will uh, post on Canvas my hours for next week. I'm definitely going to be in the Mass Study Center most of the day on Monday. And I have a final on Monday night. And then, of course, I'll be in the room before 7.15. Uh, <laughs> so you can just come here early if you, if you dare and, and ask questions. Right? Or just come on Monday. Okay. All right, guys. So I will see you next Tuesday. And that is our last day that we're ever going to meet in here together. Next Tuesday. And I'll have treats. I'll bring some treats to help the final go by better. Hopefully. All right, that's it. That's enough. Sorry. Some of you guys, I love it. You're like, shut up so I can leave. Go. Thank you. You're welcome.